Expensive submacular hemorrhage displacement using uh, a combination of vitrectomy, subretinal TPA, and uh, air uh, mix. This is a case of a patient with extensive submacular hemorrhage. He noticed a sudden loss of vision to hand movement about 10 days ago and he presented to our vitroretinal surface. For these cases, there are different treatment options. Since the submacular hemorrhage was quite extensive, we opted for the uh, surgical uh, option. And now moving to the surgery, the catch tract and lens implantation and vitrectomy were already performed. Now exploring the retina and deciding the site for the injection, I often uh, study the preoperative OCT to decide it in place before surgery. I use the microdose injection kit and it's often a good idea to test it uh, before uh, injecting the subretinal fluid. The tip is really flexible and uh, therefore you have to be very careful when you pass it through the trockers. The injection site is usually a small window where there is some subretinal fluid just to avoid any injury to the uh, RPE. The subretinal fluid is uh, slowly injected, aiming to lift uh, the retina and form uh, a subretinal uh, uh, blip. It's really important to keep the injection as slow as possible to avoid any atrogenic uh, damage to the retina. The injection usually takes about a couple of minutes to reach the desired uh, blip. The subretinal fluid gradually spreads and lifts uh, the retina till you see a, a good blip. I prefer to keep the blip as large as possible, usually extending uh, beyond the inferior uh, arcade. And this allows for a good space for the displacement of the large uh, subretinal blood. Once you, I reach the desired uh, blip size, I plan to inject an extra air, hoping that the air TPA mix will help to further displace the subretinal blood. I often try to use the same retinotomy site when possible. However, you can make another retinotomy for the subretinal air injection. I usually have the uh, pressure while injecting the air, just to make it a slow and controlled subretinal air injection when possible. Fortunately, in this scenario, the air broke up into smaller bubbles and spread across the subretinal uh, blip. This will further help to displace the subretinal uh, hemorrhage. Then moving to partial uh, fluid air exchange, roughly speaking about 70 to 80%. Of the fluid uh, is exchanged uh, with air and then before leaving the vitreous cavity I explore the retina and one final evaluation this is followed by removing one of the trockers and exchanging the air inside the eye with gas I decided to go for SF620% and the gas alongside the subretinal TPA and air will help to further displace the subretinal uh, bleed. The second trocker is removed and gently uh, massage the sclerotomy side and then the last trocker with the infusion and finally at the end of the surgery I decided to inject anti-VGF using a 30 uh, gauge uh, needle since the bleed is most likely due to wet uh, macular uh, generation. Here is the uh, white field fundus picture one week after the surgery. There is some dispersed vitreous hemorrhage and remaining gas bubble. After three weeks, we got a better view of the retina and there is a small residual SF6 bubble. The OCT scan shows a remarkable improvement of the macular profile. The subretinal blood has been mostly displaced away from the macular area. Then we reviewed the patient again at six weeks. The subretinal fluid has completely uh, displaced away from the macular area and the OCT scan showed further improvement of the uh, macular profile. 
At this point, we decide to do fluorescein and geography and ICG. The late phase of the fluorescein and geography showed an area of a large uh, BED just temporal to the optic disc. The early phase of the ICG showed uh, a possible hot spot, highly suggestive of polyboidal uh, choroidal vasculopathy. At this visit, the vision has improved to 624. I arranged another uh, review at 10 weeks and then at 12 weeks. The PED has mostly resolved and at this visit, the patient has already completed uh, three injections of uh, anti-VGF. Vision has further improved to 6-18 and we are planning to continue injecting the patient as per treat and extend uh, protocol. This slide shows the baseline compared to the visit at 12 weeks. In conclusion, the subretinal uh, blood was successfully displaced using a mix of subretinal injection of TBA and uh, air. Overall, the patient did really well in this scenario. This is usually our preferred technique in such cases of extensive subretinal uh, bleed. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you will find it uh, useful. Goodbye.